Hello, my name is Sophie Green and I'm a children's author and I'm brought to you today from my hometown of Ipswich um, with, in association with the wonderful Ipswich Children's Book Group. Now I'm the author of three books for children. They are the Pock and Stubbs series. Here they are. They were written by me and illustrated by Carl James Mountford and published by Piccadilly Press. The first book is Pockin and Stubbs, and then we have The Haunting of Pelican City, and then finally, just out in March 2020, is Ghost Catcher. Each story has its own adventure, its own mystery to be solved, a villain to stop and someone to save, but they're all part of one overarching story that covers the trilogy, and that is the story of Lil Popkin. Now, Lil Popkin is an aspiring teenage reporter who lives in Pelican City. And Pelican City is dark and corrupt and rain-soaked and a very noirish place. And there's no free press there. So there are no newspapers um, that publish the news, except for a small gazette that's published underground by some renegade reporters. Um, and that's called The Klaxon. And Lil Pocken is desperate to write for The Klaxon and to publish the real news. Uh, so she's always on the lookout for a scoop. Then one day she meets Nedley Stubbs, who's a very mysterious boy that only Lil can see. When she meets Nedley, she comes across an incredible story, something so extraordinary she would never have believed it if she hadn't seen it with her own eyes. And it's a story which changes Lil Popkin's life forever, but also the lives of everyone who live in Pelican City. So, this ghost catcher was the last one out, and to tell you a little tiny bit about that, without spoiling too much of the other stories, this is the story of how Nedley Stubbs, there's Nedley there, um, get, has to go on the run because of a shadowy organisation that's um, employed by City Hall to capture ghosts. And Nedley has to rely on Lil and Abe and the gang to protect him and try and keep him safe and evade capture at all costs. So that's the final book in the story, where the story ends. Um, now today, what I would really love to do is to share with you some of the questions which I ask myself when I'm developing a character, um, in the hope that you might like to develop some characters of your own. We're going to work on a really specific character today, and that is the character of a ghost. Because although Popcorn and Stubbs is a detective story, um, it started as a ghost story, and the first character I ever developed was a ghost. Now, developing a ghostly character it's much like developing any character. There are some additional questions you need to ask yourself. So, I have some notes here and handy. I'm gonna show you the questions at the end so you don't need to try and remember them. I'm just gonna go through them first. Okay, so the first question you need to ask yourself when you're thinking about creating a ghostly character is where will they be haunting? A uh, sort of sense of place. Now, it doesn't have to be anywhere scary. Your ghost doesn't need to be scary. Or it could be that you, you turn a place which shouldn't be scary into somewhere creepy by putting a ghost in it. It's really up to you. Choose somewhere that excites you and that you're interested in. It could be set now, in the future, in the past. You could choose our world or you can invent one. It's really up to you. Have any way you like. Sometimes the sort of ghost you have will depend on the place they're haunting. The second question you need to ask yourself is, who were they? Or who are they? Who is this ghost? You can think about their name, what do they wear, what do they do? Anything about the sort of describing them and what kind of person they were. Next question, very specifically for ghosts. How did they die? Sometimes this is really important in the story. So have a think about what kind of end they came to. You don't need to necessarily share this with your reader but you need to know yourself, um, how, how they die, because it's, it's a big part of who they are as a character. Next up, this question is a question you have to ask of any character you create, not just your main characters, anyone who has anything to say in any of your books. You will need to know what is it they want, what governs the decisions they make, what are their hopes and dreams, because when you're putting them in a story, that is the thing that will move the plot along, what your character is looking for. And sometimes if you have uh, a main character, perhaps opposing characters, so you have your protagonist, your main character, and your antagonist, your sometimes your, your villain or the character that opposes them, they will have very different ones. Sometimes that's where the conflict is. So it's a good idea to work that out for all your characters. 
what do they want? And then where the story bit comes in is, why can't they get it? Because if they could just get what they wanted, it wouldn't be much of a story. So we need to put obstacles in their way, people, places, reasons why they can't get what they want. And then the point when the story really takes off, what they're going to do about it. Because therein lies how you'll tell your tale. So in order for them to achieve their goals, what do they need to do? What obstacles do they need to get past and how will they get past them? Will they? Now, one other thing which is true for ghost stories, but also for any kind of fantasy fiction is what are the rules? And this is really important because when you're writing any kind of fantasy, and I'm including in that a horror, um, sci-fi, anything like that, you need to have rules and you need to stick to them because they are what makes your world feel real and consistent. So if you're, one of your rules is that ghosts can't be seen, they can never be seen. Um, if your rule is they can't pick things up, they can't. It can be irritating, but you need to stick to it with, unless you've got a really good reason for changing it. So what are the rules of your world? What are the rules of being a ghost in your story? Now I'm going to show you with the aid of technology this list, which you can freeze frame on that if you like, um, in order to note those down. Now, you do not need to turn your ghost into a story. That's what I like doing. You might decide to turn your ghost uh, character into a comic strip or an illustration or a model. It's really up to you. It's your character. You can use them however you like. You can just keep them for future reference. It's always great to have a spooky character in your back pocket. Now I'm going to do a short reading from Ghost Catcher, so carry on tuning in if you'd like to hear that, or if you would like to work on your ghostly character now, you can pause me or stop me. But for those of you who would like to hear a, a short reading from Ghost Catcher, here we go. Now this is going to be from Chapter 1. In Ghost Catcher Chapter 1, it's called Chinatown. This is a few pages in. So investigator, private investigator Abe Mandrell, who works with Lil and Nedley, is um, now sitting in his car with his little dog Margaret on a stakeout outside a strange house in Chinatown, Pelican City. The house across the street was in darkness. Number 41 was tall, thin and leaning slightly to one side. It was weatherboarded like it was made of matchsticks with steps up to the front and alleys on both sides. Abe watched the ragged neck curtain swell mysteriously in the windows. Come on, kid, he muttered under his breath. A gold-coloured lucky cat sat on the windowsill with its paw raised, though whether in greeting or warning, Abe couldn't tell. He angled the rearview mirror to focus on the nearest chop suey restaurant. His stomach growled and Margaret frowned at it. If he's not out in five, I'm sending you in. Margaret looked purposefully ahead. She licked her nose to keep it sharp. The curtains in the window fluttered. The lucky cat's paw swung. Abe peered closer. What's he doing? His eyes were drawn to the cats waving hypnotically to him. Margaret's ears had pricked up. What is it, girl? Abe turned to face forward again, scanned the road ahead and then checked the rearview mirror. A parking space that had been empty was now filled by a car, one that had rolled in with no lights. He saw a glimmer of moonshine on a sleek-looking bonnet. Then there was a sharp rap at, the, rap at the window. He whipped around to see a face jump into view, inches away from his own. Gah! Abe yelled, flipping the contents of his mug into the air and catching it on his shirt. Lil Potkin gestured impatiently for him to open the window. Abe glared at her as he wound the handle. She was wearing a navy fishing hat pulled down low to hide her bobbed hair and cup handle ears, but the signature yellow rain mat gave her away every time. As soon as the window had dropped irreversibly into a slot in the door, Lil popped her head through it and scanned the car. Nedley isn't with you. Abe stopped grinding his teeth just long enough to say, he's working. Are you here to? Lil cut him off. We have to get him out. It's Ghost Catcher. They're right behind us. What? Abe sat forward quickly, sloshing the coffee dregs over his sleeve. How did they... There's no time. He can't be here when they arrive, Lynn insisted. Which house? Abe pointed across the road with his cup. The one with the lucky cat. But it's empty, he's... Lil interrupted again. If it's empty, then who called the haunting hotline? She gave Abe an exasperated look. I've got to warn him. You cover for me. Wait, where's Quake? 
She's still in the car. I'm just checking the back way for signs of the haunting. Come on, let's go. Abe only had a second to look confused before Margaret trod on his wet lap as she clambered over him and then jumped out of the window following Lil across the street. Lil crouched and ran quickly down the alleyways between the buildings. Margaret scampered ahead with her nose to the ground and then disappeared into the crawl space under the house. The back garden was moonlit and festooned with abandoned shuttlecocks and tennis balls. A rusted swing was overturned and decomposing wicker furniture looked like it was sinking into the ground. Lil waded knee-deep through the long wet grass and then ran up the steps to the porch. The old wood was slippery with algae. Nedley, she whispered as loudly as she dared. The nearest window was painted shut. She tried the back door, rattling the knob back and forth and then, glancing furtively left and right, she applied a bit of shoulder pressure. But it was definitely locked. Lil was beginning to panic now. She cupped her hands around her eyes and peered into the darkness. The room was fuzzily dark and made ghostly by the neck curtains which cast shadows like torn spider webs. Pale sheets covered the furniture and dust bunnies rolled across the floorboards. Lil knelt down at the keyhole and hissed, Nedley! Margaret's sharp warning bark cut through the night followed by the crackling sound of tyres on a wet road and then silence. There was no more time for subtlety. Lil thumped loudly on the, gra- on the glass. Nedley, it's time to go! The hair on her neck prickled and arose and rose in a wave of dread that Lil had got used to ignoring now. There was a sound like a pebble being dropped into a glass of water and Nedley appeared at the door. His large eyes looked like hollows in his pale, thin face and a lock of his roughly cut hair fell over his forehead. Lil half shouted, Quick, you have to leg it! On the street there was a the sound of car doors slamming. Ghost catcher here already? Nedley gasped. You can make it, just go! Nedley ran into the middle of the garden. He started one way and then panicked and turned the other. He looked back at Lil and she jabbed her thumb in the direction of the street and he gulped, nodded and then ran through the fence at the side of the yard. Lil puffed out her cheeks, took another deep breath to slow down her heart and make herself seem calm and then keeping close to the shadows of the house next door she snuck back down the alleyway to watch. And if you'd like to find out what happened next you need to read the book. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope I see you soon. Goodbye.